Oh, hi, my name is Kevin, and I collect old irons. If you're like me and of a scholarly bent and wish to make a more detailed study of antique pressing irons, you need a research library. If you were studying guns or cars, coins or stamps, you would find quite a range of definitive books that gave you histories and dates and values, wholesale, retail, and every range of condition. But there isn't such definitive materials in the realm of old irons. There are books and magazines to be sure, but these do not provide the full realm of information. There is much that is unknown. In this video, we're going to talk about the essential research materials that are available and how you might get these. We will be concentrating on the English language. There are two books that I can especially recommend. Both are published in the 1970s and are the result of detailed research. The first of these is Glissman's Evolution of Saturn. This book provides a detailed study of the early history of the Oriental, European, and American irons, and also gives the history of the origin of the lyrics of Pop Goes the Weasel. A second book is Bernie's Pressing Irons and Trivets. This is an especially good book with lots of photographs of irons, sometimes with the associated trivets as well. There also is a series of three books written by David Irons, and that is his last name. These are Irons by Irons, and then the two sequels, More Irons by Irons, and even more Irons by Irons. These books consist mainly of photographs taken from people's collections with fairly minimal additional information, no more information than is actually on those irons. But they do give an inkling of the, the enormity, the, the huge diversity in the world of old irons. Let me also say in passing that the value guides should not be taken all that seriously. I find that they give you a nature of rarity in general, but by and large, if you are patient, you will find irons of lower prices than in the value guides, and the values that I generally give during these videos reflect those lower prices. If you're interested in trivets and stands, there are two very good books. The first of these is Kelly and Elwood's Trivets and Stands, and we have mentioned that book previously. That book has photographs of more than a thousand individual distinct trivet and stand designs with detailed measurements and descriptions. It's a very good book. And that book is complemented by Lynn Rosak's Trivets, which provides beautiful color images and deals with the whole breadth of things that relate to the, to the trivets as well. Both are very highly recommended. If you wish to get the seven books I've mentioned thus far, they were all published in significant numbers and they're readily available even though they're out of print. If you are patient and keep an eye on Bookfinder, Amazon, and eBay, you can get used copies for surprisingly inexpensive. I recently bought a copy of Bernie on eBay for $8. So, there is easy access to these. I think you can get that entire library for something well less than $200 altogether. There are also several good books on more specialized studies of various of the iron topics. One of these is the book Streamlined Irons by Jay Raymond, sort of a industrial design study, color images, detailed, just a beautiful book. And Jay has more recently done a book on mangle boards, which I don't yet have a copy to show but is a beautiful book. There are several other books to mention. Oliver St. John did a book called A Gallimophory of Goffering, 
This is an older book, Line Drawings About the Gopher Irons, a topic that really deserves a more thorough study with color images, and I leave that to, to Jay or somebody else, hopefully, to get around to. There are also two books by Mark Durham that are compilations of fluting iron patents. These, like the Gallimaufry of Goffering, are self-published and consist of black and white illustrations. There are also two excellent books on toy irons written by Judy Pulitzer. This one is called Tuesday's Children, and there's another book called Early Tuesday Mornings. We might be reminded that Tuesday was traditionally the day for ironing. These books include photographs, but also include a one-to-one -one scale drawing of the outline of the base of the iron, which is very useful. So where would I get copies of the St. John, Durham, and Pulitzer books? The Pressing Iron and Trivet Collectors of America maintains a loaning library, and you can get copies from that library and then simply photocopy them, bound them, and put them in your collection. And I have done that personally for the, my copy of the Gallimaufry book. The Tuesday's Children series are available through PICA, and I think that the Durham books will in the near future be available through PICA as well. There are also a variety of lesser books, perhaps a dozen altogether, and the Sears and Roebuck catalogs, some of which are reprinted, and other materials. And perhaps the best way to get these is by searching for the book lots amongst the specialty iron auctions. These auctions are often uh, estate sales for one of the major collections, and they include all kinds of research materials that way. And you can buy a book lot of, for maybe $50 and get various of these kinds of books. And, and that's how I've gotten various of these and then the duplicates I make available to beginning collectors. We provide a bibliography of these books at the end of this video if you wish to search for these books individually by BookFinder or whatever. There are also three noteworthy periodicals about old irons in the English language. The first of these is Iron Talk, published by Carol Walker in the late 1900s or early 2000s. 40 of these altogether, extremely well written and very useful. There is also the PICA newsletter, Pressing News, which goes back for several decades. Again, a lot of material and of increasingly beautiful quality. And again, we need to, to thank Jay for that. And there is a, an equivalent newsletter from England called Pressing Matters, which was edited by Julia Morgan for many years. And I should say that this particular copy is bound and I got it one of the box lots at a specialty auction. But all these resources serve merely as background. There is much more to be learned by the detailed study of the individual specimens and the contemporaneous literature, which would be the advertisements, the trade cards, the articles in trade magazines, and so forth. Many of these irons do not have patent dates and do not have names written on the irons. And there's much to be learned about these. As an example, I present a group of irons that I'm currently studying and trying to figure out. These I call the tub fluters. I have three distinct uh, types. The, these are the ship, the barge, and the raft. The ship and barge have a very deep hull uh, with a plate on top and a slug within. The uh, raft is, is smaller dimensions all around. And again, no patents, no manufacturer's information. Where did they come from? Complicating the picture is that the ship or the barge here has a slug that exactly matches the slug in the happy iron, another iron for which you have neither patent or manufacturer's name. So these two are very closely related. 
similarly, if I look at the hand fluter top associated with various of these, that is a pretty near exact match for the roller hand fluters associated with the Deans and the Streeters. So again, these are very, very much the same. Um, the tub fluters have these little tabs on them, but otherwise they are practically identical. So these tubs and the Happy Irons and the Deans and likely the Streeters too are all very closely related, but that relationship whether it's by a merger or acquisition or copying designs or whatever is largely unknown and a deeper deeper study of the ads and the ephemera associated with the period might clear this up so there you have it there's lots to learn about old irons in my professional life i actually do scientific research in paleontology i have discovered and described new species and so forth and i find that there is you know, there's just so much exciting things to learn about and I'm personally motivated by all that and that may also be what beckons the old irons to me. It's a, it's a suitably obscure and largely unknown group that deserves further study and I hope that other people will be engaged by this. So with that we are finished with this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next videos. <laughs>